Each inch of your skin is made up of 19 million skin cells, 650 sweat glands, 20 blood vessels, and 1000 nerve endings. That is each single inch of your skin. According to the American Academy of Dermatology, the skin is the body's largest organ, and our first line of defense against the outside world, including irritants and allergens. So taking good care of your skin is important for more than just your appearance. It is absolutely worth the time and energy to take care of your skin on a daily basis. You may know people that splash some water on their face and call it good. This might work well for them. The fact is that everyone is different and most people are going to need to do more than that to keep their skin looking healthy. If you don't know exactly what type of your skin you have, it's important to find out. And I must warn you, this video will become more medical in some parts, so clear your mind, grab your drink, and let's dive in. Hello, my name is Mustafa, and I'm gonna talk about the human skin structure and some interesting facts about it, with wide range of functions that support survival. A view through the microscope reveals a layered structure of the skin and the many smaller elements within these layers that helps the skin to perform its mainly protective role. The skin has two main layers, the epidermis and derms. Below these layers is a layer of subcutaneous fat. The outermost surface of the skin is epidermis, which itself contains several layers. The basal cell layer, the spinous cell layer, the granular cell layer, and the stratum corneum. The cells in the epidermis are called keratinocytes. The deepest layer of the epidermis is a basal cell layer. Here cells are continually dividing to produce plump new skin cells, millions of it, daily. These cells move towards the skin surface, pushed upward by the dividing cells below them. Blood vessels in the derms, which is below the basal cell layer, supply nutrients to support the active growth of the new skin cells. As the basal cells move upwards and away from their blood supply, their cell content and shape changes. Cells above the basal cell layer become more irregular in shape and form the spinous layer. Above this, cells move into the granular layer. Being distant from the blood supply in the derms, the cells began to flatten and die and accumulate a substance called keratin. Keratin is a protein that is also found in hair nails. The stratum corneum, which is the horny layer, is a top layer of the epidermis is a layer of the skin that we see from the outside. Cells here are flat and scale-like or squamous in shape. These cells are dead and contain a lot of keratin, which are arranged in overlapping layers that import a tough and waterproof character to the skin's surface. Similar to a snake that sheds, your skin renews itself every 28 days. Skin cells generate at the bottom of the epidermis and takes them about a month to reach the surface as dead cells naturally come off. Even when you sleep, Mother Nature is doing her job by making sure your skin exfoliates itself. Dead skin cells are continually shed from the skin's surface. Here comes an interesting question. If your skin cells shed every month, so how do the two stick around? It turns out to be a function of your immune system. The puncture of the tattoo needle causes inflammation in the derms. In response, white blood cells known as macrophages are sent in to help to heal the damage. These macrophages eat the dye and can pass it to newer macrophages when they die. So the pigment is essentially transferring from one cell to another. Any leftover pigment is soaked up by the fibroblasts, which are longer lasting skin cells that don't regenerate as often. Only lasers designed for the tattoo removal are stronger enough to kill off the macrophages and the fibroblasts that hold the dye. Also, in the basal cell layer are cells called melanocytes that produce melanin. Melanin is a pigment that is absorbed into the dividing skin cells to help protect them against damage from sunlight, mainly the ultraviolet light. The amount of melanin in your skin is determined by your genes and by how much exposure to sunlight you have. The more melanin pigment present, the darker the color of your skin. The epidermis also contains dendritic or Langerhans cells, which are part of the immune system that help protect the body from foreign substances. Below the epidermis is a layer called the derms. The top layer of the derms, the one directly below the epidermis, has many ridges called papillae. On the fingertips, 
The skin surface follows this pattern of ridges to create our individual fingerprints. So the ridges are not in the outermost layer of the skin, as it might appear. The dermis contains a variable amount of fat and also collagen and elastin fibers, which provides strength and flexibility to the skin. In an older person, the elastin fiber fragment much of the skin's elastic quality is lost. This, along with the loss of the subcutaneous fat, results in wrinkles. When the skin is exposed to sunlight, modified cholesterol in the derms produces vitamin D, which helps the body to absorb calcium for healthy bones. The innermost layer of the skin is a layer of subcutaneous fat, and its thickness varies in the different regions of the body. The fat stored in this layer represents an energy source for the body and helps to insulate the body against changes in the outside temperature. As you can see, there are many different structures within the skin. Together, these structures impart many protective properties to the skin that help avoid damage to the body from outside influences. In this way, the skin protects the body from water loss and from injury due to pumps, chemicals, sunlight or microorganisms while also act as a sensor to inform the brain of changes in the immediate environment and also synthesizes vitamin D, as I mentioned before. That's all about the skin anatomy and functions. So when it comes to skincare, there is no question that prevention is easier than fixing a problem. Doing things like washing your face daily and using a good moisturizer can prevent invasive treatments down the road. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.